I am Thor, son of Odin. As long as there is life in my breast, I am running out of things to say. Great, another broken white boy for us to fix. That's my secret, Cat. I'm always in. You took everything from me. I don't even know who you are. With great power comes great responsibility. I can do this all day. Wakanda forever! And welcome, Internet, to another episode of Views from the 616, the blackest MCU podcast in the multiverse, powered by For All Nerds, where we discuss everything in the MCU from the perspective of people of color. And it is one of your hosts, Tatiana King, a.k.a. T'Challa Bread, a.k.a. the Wicked Witch of the West View, a.k.a. the coldest winter soldier ever, a.k.a. Doc Aki, a.k.a. Lawanda Vision. And I am here joined by my amazing co-host. That's a good one. Uh, it's your boy DJ Ben. I mean, aka Karen Civil War, Black Black Tom Petty, <laughs> a pimp named Sam Wilson, John. Walk it out, walk it out, walk it out. NBA young boy never flipped again. Off White Panther, the Black Adam Warlock, here tonight on the spaceship. Thank you. Excellent. And we are here for a special views from the six one six because we got some goods very early. We got. Werewolf by night. And <laughs> ahead of the uh, spooky season schedule, um, we were blessed. Thanks so much to House of Mouse for the shout outs and, and the access. Ben, I mean, I know you were really excited about this. I less so because just because that's not really my jam. Um, and, and, and then before I get too, too deep, I have a question for you. Is this considered what they consider like grindhouse type style like what is this there's definitely some grindhouse elements in this definitely okay. some uh grindhouse 60s 70 horror okay. elements definitely yeah that okay uh, that's not what's what my i care about name? <laughs> that's that's not my that's not my lane necessarily but so i i wasn't wild excited but i was like oh i'm gonna watch it because it's something different from marvel and we always complain about like seeing the same old same old so i was interested hmm. in that Okay, so when you saw it, what were your yeah. feelings? Okay, um, I don't think I should go first. I think we should talk about... <laughs> no, I could go first, but let me talk about the things that, that I did find intriguing about this. Um, this was just, as I mentioned, just different from everything we've seen from Marvel thus far. It was more on the darker side of things. Like, I mean, we, we've seen some of the darkness, like when you think about Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness and how far left that can go. Um, this was not, I, for me, it wasn't that left, but it was It was just not the same old typical formula. And I did like to see that, thank you for confirming that, it had some grindhouse elements to it, mm -hmm. but that it had those, from a cinematic perspective, from a directorial perspective, it was just a different ball game from anything we've seen thus far. So I, I did appreciate that. Um, I don't know who the fuck is who, in this or what was going on i i was listening i still wasn't really following what was happening and i think that's mainly also funny enough predicated by the fact that i expected a pattern right i expected a pattern or a obvious for me insertion of how this uh, aligned with the rest of the mcu and when i couldn't figure it out i was kind of a little bit lost but okay. um that's not a bad thing again this is just a way to enter in new characters uh, especially the new character well new for me new ish I know he's been around forever. forever. Man thing. Um, that was cool to see that. Look, yes. it, gave, it gave me CGI animatronics, and I know that was part of the style, but <laughs> I thought I thought it was funny. It, it, it was, I presume this character is, is, you know, meant to be like this monstrous abomination, and then in this, they kind of played him up a little bit for laughs, you know, a little bit like he's dangerous, but he's also just like you and me. So, and I know there's a little bit more about that you want to get into, but... um. Overall, while I see the merits of this, it wasn't my favorite Marvel project. I, I, again, I, that's just the whole, that that element of old school type, type horror is not it's not my fave. But you know, I know I, I see that a lot of people really enjoy this. Yes. All right. Well, first of all, that we mentioned, it is directed by Michael Gian, Giancino. I hope I'm not butchering your name out there, sir. Michael's actually a super well-known movie composer. This is one of his first directorial oh, wow. debuts, though. Yeah, he did a lot of joints, like Up and Mad Other Joints. Like, oh, my up, man. Up is yeah, classic. classic. So he's musically inclined, but this, and obviously film-wise as well, but this is his first directorial debut, I would say. 
and uh, Heather Quinn, the teleplay is by, and Jerry Conway is the classic art. I mean, author who created Werewolf by Night, Jack Russell, as we know right. by. I think part of the reason why I was also confused because I, for I presumed a connection with Moon Moon Knight because of mm -hmm. during the Moon Knight, and and I know technically there is later on, but. I remember when we were watching Moon Knight, one of the QR codes was to the Werewolf by Night comic. And that was yep. just, I mean, we knew it was coming, but I was also just a, a, a cue that Werewolf by Night, the actual, you know, some type of, I don't even want, what is it, mini, what is this, a movie, a, a short film? A short film was coming. I don't even know what mm -hmm. you call this, a project. We knew that was just letting you guys know that the project was coming, but I, I don't know. I thought maybe Moon Knight would show up and there was something else going on. I was, I was all types of confused, so I didn't know what the fuck was happening. Okay. Well, no, this is a Marvel special. This is the first of their specials. We'll also see probably later this year the Guardians of the Gal Galaxy holiday special, which is going to lead mm -hmm. more directly into Guardians of the Galaxy 3 from what, uh, what's his name, James Dunn has said so far. This... While Fahey has said that this will eventually play a bigger part in the Marvel Universe, this is a pretty self-contained story. Very. And that's one of the things that I really enjoyed about it because it was just 50 minutes telling the story about the werewolf by night, about Jack Russell, about Elsa Bloodstone, his introducing both of their characters. Yes, <laughs> like the dog, name, Jack Russell. Jack <laughs> Russell. Yes, let's get that out the way. I just thought about <laughs> We are now getting into the times of marvel characters that will be ridiculously named like soon we will have a nova series or movie starring the one and only richard Ryder. oh nigga get the fuck out of here yo okay continue i mean you get it right you get it right? <laughs> yes, i don't, yes, I don't I need to explain it, it. yeah richard I, Ryder, folks i get yeah. it I get so it. anyway yeah jack russell and they introduce him they introduce elsa they tell the story they introduce the whole monster side of the marvel universe because there's a lot of them and they've had a deep history in the comics. And so for all of that, I enjoyed it. I really loved the black and white. I thought the cinematography was fantastic. I love that style of stuff. Like, there's a great movie uh, starring Johnny Depp. I know he's not everyone's favorite right now, but everybody in Hollywood is trying to be an asshole. So uh, he has this film, Ed Wood, where he's playing the title character, Ed Wood. And Ed Wood is actually a famous film director from, like, the 1950s, 60s, who worked, like, doing cheap movies, you know, knocking them joints out. You know, Ed Wood would just knock films out, you know, no problem with no budget, no nothing. And he did a lot of these cheap black and white sci-fi horror type things where you see this. And I loved all the little touches, like the film spots on the film, the mm -hmm. actual grade of the black and white they use. Mm -hmm. There's some really ill and dope stuff towards the end that I don't want to spoil that I really, really love. The use of music. Michael's obviously well-versed in that. I love Jack. I love uh, Gail Garcia Bernal playing Jack Russell. I love Laura Donnelly as Elsa Bloodstone. They instantly became two of my favorite characters. I'm thinking about cosplaying them for Halloween this year. Mm hmm so I was all in. And then it's like, it's that ridiculous humor with horror, over the top, kind of cheesy. But then when it needs to be pretty horrific and kind of scary, it is. Yeah. And so I loved yeah. it. I loved how the tone worked. I loved all of that, man. Like, yeah, yeah I was here I, for it. I understood the parody part of it and the the homage to the you know, old school mm -hmm. scenes like that and, 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 you know, the horror stuff and... And and that's even how they present it to you, like when they're yes. just advertising the the trailer of it. Like it's presented like it's one of them twenty five cent movies that you go and see in between <laughs> or before the movie you're really there to watch. So yep. I and I and, and that's cool. And 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 to your point, I think if you're into that type of style, you're really gonna really enjoy this. If you're not, you're gonna be like, okay, whatever. Um, I didn't really care. I mean, it's more so her voice was bothering me deeply. Um, Harriet. Uh, Har uh, Lady Versus, rather, excuse me, Harriet's the, the, the name of the actress that played her. But Verusa. Lady Verusa. Lady Verusa Bloodstone. Her voice pissed me off. Like <laughs> she, it was grating and irritating like sand. And I know that was probably the point, but I was just, every time she fucking opened her mouth, I was like, please, nigga, shut up. So I, I just, I was, you know, it, it was just, uh, it was, uh, that was annoying me. But like I said, I think 
and this is probably my own fault. Just I was sitting there waiting for an obvious connection to stuff mm. I know. Like I don't know shit about Werewolf by Night. I don't know shit about these characters. I don't know shit about the Bloodstone. I don't. Even, I thought the Bloodstone was the fucking uh, um, Red Infinity <laughs> Stone. I was like, okay, so this is this is what it is from the past, right? Like I'm saying, I was forcing connections to make myself understand mm. versus just walking like, hey, this is just a full standalone thing. And I think mm. that's where I took the misstep. And why I didn't enjoy it as much. If I came in there just with with no expectation, then maybe. But even still, again, this is very stylized. And if you're not into that style, I don't know. Yeah. See, I had no expectations other than I was hoping to see Blade. That Mm. was my one hope for this, that I would somehow see Blade. I was thinking Moon Knight, but after having seen the Moon Knight series, I was like, ain't no way that man going to show up in this. But that just ain't going to make no sense. Well, I mean, it could could have. It would be plausible. I know, but come on. Man look like his cousin. Jack Russell looked like his damn cousin. I know. True indeed. But after all that man been through in that Moon Knight series to show up and have to deal with some werewolves right now, he (laughs) he is not not in the right state for that right now. He don't need none of that on his plate. So I, I was hoping for Blade. I guess this is a spoiler. There is no Blade in this folks. I don't want you to go in looking for Blade and waiting for Blade because that man ain't in it any way, shape, or form. And I think this is better for that. You know, that's the thing. I think it's better to be a project where a special where it doesn't really connect. Like Faye, he said it will in the larger sense in the long run. But I like seeing that. I am barely know anything about werewolf by night i think i've read like maybe two or three comics in my life that featured him mm-hmm. i've never read you know anything where he was leading it none of that is that his like official title werewolf by night or no it's he's just, just werewolf what, he, he's just a werewolf he's jack russell you know he's a dude okay. dealing with it most of the time it's never like you know he's he's the tragic character he doesn't want to be a werewolf and it's just mm-hmm. werewolf by night you know it's just a you know, they used to have ill names like that. And that's just an ill name to me. You know, werewolf by night. Because he's Regular Jack nigga Russell by day. by day. Werewolf by night, you know. Um, and that's where my DJ, you know, Ben I mean by night comes from. You right. know, DJ by night. But, you know. Right. Y'all while, get it now. While I wasn't, like, again, and, and I just want to be clear. Like, it's not that I did not enjoy it. I just, I just didn't quite understand it. And that's, mm-hmm. that's why I just not all over the moon about this. But I will say the thing that did stand out. As a thing I liked was the the deaths and some of the the, the non gore <laughs> yes. the gore non gore like that shit yes. was funny to me because yes it again because of that old school homage like it was outrageous shit happening to some people <laughs> and I'm just like bro and like and then it was like outrageous and then clearly fake but yes. also real like it, it yes. was it was it was funny how they they told that line so in that way it was funny yes. That way it was hilarious. I thought, like I said, the cinematography to me was crazy. There's this one moment that I won't give away at all, but it's one moment where I'm just like, yo, please do that with this cinematography. Please do this. And then they did it. And I, because <laughs> they were leading into it. So I knew they were about to do it. And then they did it. And I was like, oh, and it's this ill fight going on. And the cinematography is crazy in that moment. I loved how, like you said, how they did gore, but they didn't do gore. Even with something as gory as the werewolf transformation, they still manage to show it to you in a way that's really like horrifying yeah. and gets it across. And that's why I really love Laura, like Laura Donnelly. I love, I don't worry, once again, Elsa Bloodstone, the whole Bloodstone. They have it, it's been in the Marvel Universe in the comics for a long time. You know, Ulysses are, what, Bloodstone. Who are the Bloodstones? Are they like monster hunters? Are they vampire hunters? Who are they? As far as I know, because once again, I've barely read them. I remember at one point when I was a kid, there was this, uh, crossover during like the summer where it was like the hunt for the bloodstone and i think that's when elsa first became a big character because from before that i think ulysses was the main you know dude and then when he he was as far as i remember he looked like a a tarzan type dude but you know he had this bloodstone in his chest and it gave him powers and whatnot and that bloodstone is really not the power stone no it's really not the power stone it's a whole nother stone it's much bigger it's big and red and Look pick like up heart. his whole chest. Yeah, it looked like a heart. And then I remember there was like this hunt for the bloodstone where it's like, who gets the bloodstone? And I guess Laura ended up with it. But yeah. that gun, the shotgun you see and the sword that are on his coffin, that's like the iconic look. And it, not not a Tarzan, more like Indiana Jones, like oh, okay. that type of character. Gotcha. And gotcha. then, yeah, monsters would be in their way because, you know. And also, it really goes before Indiana Jones. There's a character, Dot Savage. Who goes back to like the pulp novels of the 1930s, who all these characters come from, like the super smart, super strong genius. Uh, what's that cartoon? 
Venture Bros, right? Mm. Yeah, the mm-hmm. lead character mm-hmm. in Venture Bros is mm-hmm. like based off of the Dot Savage ideal, which is like oh. all, all of these characters descend from that. The super Got smart, it. super strong, explorer, Got adventurer, it. you know, white man. So how is this supposed to link to the rest of the MCU? Just the introduction of monsters? or Yeah, just the introduction of monsters and that side of the universe. The man thing himself or itself, whatever, connects to the Marvel Universe. Looks like in Snuffy. It looks like Snuffy on, in, in two legs. <laughs> <laughs> they're, like, they're like overgrown snuffleupagus. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. Well, the man thing started out as, as this character, and that was one of my favorite things is, is his tagline. The man thing's tagline is, he who knows fear shall burn at the touch of the man thing. So if Damn. you, so that's the thing. <laughs> serious. When you see this green, horrible monster walking up to you, of course you're going to be scared, right? Mm-hmm. But if you're scared, if you stared, say you stared, nigga. Because when, <laughs> when you stared, then when he touches you, you burst in a flame. Oh, shit. Yes. In, in the comics, that's what happens? Yes. He who knows fear shall Ooh. burn at the touch of the oh, man Oh, that thing. was literal. <laughs> yes, okay. that is literal. Not figuratively. That is literal. If you know fear. And so that was the thing. You're not supposed to know fear when you see it because it's a peaceful creature. Mm, you know, and so you're supposed to be like, nah, you know, ignore what this thing looks like and realize this ain't the, out to hurt me. And then right. you won't burst into flame. Yeah. And then it gets linked because he's a mystical well, creature. He gets linked to like Doctor Strange, to the Hulk, to Silver Surfer, to yeah. all kind of characters in the Marvel Universe. And they called him Ted in the in the, in the the short film? Yes. That is his <laughs> real name. He was once a Ted. human. Ted. Okay. He, yes. I figured as much. Uh, you know, he just just like werewolf. Like you know, you had yeah. some human element there, and then something happened. But. And then something happened. But he don't transform back. My man is always the man thing. How does this does this have? I mean, clearly there's two different franchises. But like, how's this related or not to related the swamp to the swamp thing? thing? Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, Besides, you, oh, you put that out. I'm gonna put this out to come back. How do you say Jack in four beats? Um. At the, at the funny right. thing about it is, like, they were actually roommates. Uh, Jerry Conway and the dude who created Swamp Thing, Lynn Wine. Yep, Lynn Wine. Okay. But they were roommates. And Jerry created Man Thing, uh, and like a year and a half later, Lynn created Swamp Thing. Jerry tried to convince him that their origins were too similar. Uh, Lynn was like, they weren't. So he they said, fuck kept you, going. nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do what I want to do. Fuck you, bitch, and kept going. And right. That was the end of that, and the characters diverged so wildly. And it's funny because they're both, in their own way, like hugely successful and intricate, intricate. I mean, intricate parts of their own universes. Like Swamp Thing had a run by Alan Moore that's considered to be some of the greatest mm, comics ever. Watchmen, written. Alan Moore. Yes, okay. like wow. yeah, like that's what I mean. It's considered some of the best comics ever written. And then Man Thing has just played a part in so many things in like the Marvel universe, being this like guardian of the multiverse at one point he right. you know it even represents that's interesting because before the dc universe spontaneously combusted um they were mm-hmm. technically working on a swamp thing live action and they had the swamp thing series no it, it came out for or, or did they have it actually oh come it happened out? it happened and it was uh, really good it okay really i thought good. it never even saw the light of day but okay and then for those old enough there was a swamp thing movie way back in the day that Fuck me up as a kid, dog. It was like, oh man, mm. seeing that dude get turned into the swamp thing was not right for a young Ben. <laughs> I mean, folks, like, not right at all. Oh Damn. no, yeah. Okay, so I guess we're gonna see more stones in the future of the MCU. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. There's only one bloodstone. It ain't like that. There ain't no. no other, I mean, more, like, more, more magical things like. Oh yeah, there there's, ain't no heart stones. Stone. You know, no thought stones. Yeah, no, 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 no. Just this new different shit that is yes. unrelated. You know, we got the book of Ashanti. Vishanti, I know y'all, but Ashanti yeah. is what I call it. Um, okay, all right. So I mean, and I thought maybe you know, I was like, oh, maybe I'm tired. I just don't know no better. But no, I was just like. I watched it again a little bit. I was like, oh, yeah, no, not for me. But that being said, if you are into that type of stuff, I think it would be really cool, like, with the with Halloween approaching and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That fits right into the spooky season motif. So, you know, kudos to you guys for Werewolf by Night. Did you have any other things you wanted to mention about it? Hmm. Trying to think. What else was there to say about this? I mean... Like I said, there ain't much to it, right? We get the introduction of yeah. Jack Russell. I mean, there weren't any Easter eggs of of note, but to, again, I feel like unless you've read the books and really yeah. know, Look. you wouldn't know. And I don't, I didn't, 
I mean, other than the shout outs to like the iconic look of the Bloodstones with the double barrel shotgun that we'll see on, you'll see on his, uh, on Ulysses coffin. I'm sure there might be some other shout outs to some monster stuff going on that I just was not aware of because like I said, I don't know all that. I know there was a lot of names on some graves at one point that people might know, but I think that's just some of the Ulysses Uh, family and some other stuff. I thought it was people who worked at Marvel. You know how they like to insert their the names, people in the art department and stuff like that, like to insert their names and stuff into things in the background. So Yeah, you got me. And like I said, I really can't uh give away the ending, but I just thought that was really beautiful. And that was the thing, I thought it was just a really heartfelt story. Like you didn't feel Jack and um Elsa? No. Wow. When you don't know what the fuck's going on for ninety percent of the the time, it's just like, okay, why do I care about y'all? No, damn. <laughs> Again, I like I, I attribute it. I explained already how I attribute it. It's probably my fault, but even still, I'm good on it. You know, <laughs> you ain't gonna give it an, another try and find out. No, nope. you ain't gonna ever around to find out on that one. No, nope. I'm good. Wow. I'm um. Good. No, like I said, I really appreciated, you know, that Marvel, and I know people say this every time, like, and I think that's been, there's like two sides to this point, right? People always say, oh, everything Marvel does looks like, and then they say, oh, Marvel never does anything different, and then- This is different. It, and then it's also the other one that lately come up to was like, this is different than anything Marvel's ever done. <laughs> And I feel like that hasn't really been the case most of the time. You know, like, I don't think Eternals, other than being long and shot on IMAX, is different than anything Marvel's ever done, you know? It still ends in a big CGI fight like the rest of them, you know? I don't think... I think WandaVision was pretty different. I think Loki... I think most of the TV stuff has been different, just by definition of it being TV versus movies. Yeah, because it's a... I mean... You and because it's TV to me, I feel like it's more flexible because, yes. especially you know, if it's that type of show, if you want to switch up the the tonality, if you want to switch up the fucking color grading, you could, right? Like, mm-hmm. you, and not to say you can't do it in a movie. It's just you kind of have to stick with a certain direction and keep it going. Whereas if you uh, you saw in Wandavision, they just really every just, episode was something completely different. Every episode, right? Um, they're, they're just a little bit more. I know, just just they have more freedom. Yeah, a little bit more freedom. 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 Yeah. yeah. I mean, they've been said that TV is the place that if you really want to have creative control these days, or not even control, but just express yourself more, mm. it's definitely TV. Because like you said, when you have a big budget franchise, you you know, people come in there to see one thing, you know, and they want to yeah. see it. They don't want to be like, wait, what is this? You know, which you can do on a TV show like with WandaVision, where you can release the first two episodes and and then people will see the ending. They're like, okay, I kind of get what they're doing. Even if you don't, it's enough to keep you going. And like, okay, they're doing something different. You can't really do that in a movie unless it's some small movie like Everything Everywhere where you can just do whatever you're thinking about. Right. Because no one's expecting anything. They're yes. just like, this shit looks yeah. cool. I'm going in. So Yeah. But with Marvel yeah. especially, you know, it's like these big movies, they mean things. It's like, okay, we come here to see all this. You know, we want to come see the big moments, everything. Like we just stress on our Wakanda Forever trailer which you uh trailer review which you can now peep on all of our channels as well you know so mm-hmm. that's something to look out for mm-hmm. but yeah no i really enjoyed this and i really think that this time they can safely say this is different than anything marvel's ever done and i just yep. thought it was a really good short little nice heartfelt story that also has all the horror and some comedy type stylings that i don't think we've really seen in the marvel universe before Mm. You know, like that real like goofball, damn near airplane, damn near the naked gun type, you know, buffoonery at some points, you know. <laughs> he said buffoonery. Think, yeah, I don't think we've really <laughs> seen that, you know, in a Marvel franchise yet. And I really enjoyed that. Some of those jokes were like, they're like terrible dad joke level, you know, the worst of puns. And I enjoy that type of stuff. So. <laughs> Terrible enough to laugh at it. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And then when it got violent, it got violent. And <laughs> it was like, oh and- shit. I did say oh shit once. So I was like, oh damn. <laughs> no, like, at the very least, you'd be like, damn. You know, it's like <laughs> I it, did, I did say, oh my God. Okay, that yeah, was that was harsh. It's like silly, but it's like I mean, I wasn't covering my eyes, but I'll tell you what point I was like, oh man, this dude about to catch it just like that, ain't he? And I'm like, I'm trying not to look, but I got to see it too, you know, and then he caught yeah. it just like that. But, but yeah. no, it's not, it's not wild gory, y'all. y'all no, it's it, not wild gory. You're, 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 you're fine. 
I don't. I would. I don't know if there's an age limit on this one, but I think most it, kids it, can handle this. Because it, it again, it just borders on the absurd. It's some of the <laughs> some of the violence. It's like, all right, y'all, like y'all being stupid. Like, yeah. but it's and and it's funny because it's on purpose. Like it's yes, unless you're just completely just being. A, I will say that if you are being a hater. Like you can't. You can tell that they're doing that on purpose, right? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The whole style is in, ingrained into this yeah. project. So yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. all right. So that has been our review of Werewolf by Night. Um, when does this come out, Ben Hami? It's gonna come out on Disney Plus Friday, maybe a day after you hear this, or maybe the day you hear this by the time you get to it. But yeah, okay. So October seventh, it comes out publicly. So you guys will be able to watch and see for yourself. What did you think? Let us know how you feel about it. You're not gonna convince me to watch it again, but. Uh, <laughs> Again, I, I will recommend it for people who want to see something different and some people who are, you know, into that, the horror motif. I will say that. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. This is definitely much more of the, well, no, Doctor Strange, for what it was, definitely had some, you know, ridiculous horror moments too. So this is a different type of ridiculous horror. Though. This is <laughs> definitely a different style than Do- the Doctor Strange. So the Doctor Strange was definitely Sam Raimi to its fullest. And this is like Ed Wood, old school. Not Twilight Zone, because Twilight Zone is much more cerebral. This is like the old movies that would come on at like 2 in the morning before, before the TV go off. You know, like... <laughs> you talking about when they used to shut down the fucking yeah. channel. When they All used right, to shut down the channel, for the night. This would be the movie that would come on right before they would shut down the channel. Like the old black and white joint. I remember as a kid, I was staying at my aunt's house, and... I mean, I'm super young, and there's like, and late night, one night, I'm up watching TV at her house, and it's this movie, I've never Googled it to find out what it is, and now someone's to find it for me, and I'm going to be mad because it's going to horrify me again, <laughs> about like these moving brains, and it was like the brains got out of these jars, and were attacking people and stuff, and it was old black and white with like these, you know, stop motion animated brains that were coming at people, and it was... As you know, as a kid, I was quite horrified, dog. Like I, you know, this is not something. Yeah, so I'm sure if I watch it now, I'd probably be rolling, laughing at it. But that, that's what this is. That's what Werewolf by Night is. If you're like four years old, this might, you know, mess you up. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> horror. Yeah, the horror for a four year old. But Jesus. you know, six and over, you could be crying, laughing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. That has been our review of Werewolf by Night. Thank you for listening. Be sure to follow us on your favorite podcast platform. Follow For All Nerds to listen to views from the 616. Follow us on the Twitters as well. We say funny, cool things over there for the children. Views from 616 on Twitter. I'm at Tatiana King. He's at DJ Ben Hameen. Make sure you're also supporting us with for our merch. We're wearing two of the amazing shirts. I'm wearing the Would You Like to Fuck Around and Find Out Miss Minute shirt. Ben Hameen is wearing the Views from the 616 logo shirt. We have that and more and more coming to the Tee Public. TeePublic.com slash stores slash for all nerds. Also, uh, yes, you will hopefully hear this during this week, but we will be at New York Comic Con. Make sure you say hello to the crew. The whole fan fam will be there. Everyone, including our engineer, engineer Luna, including our social media manager, Chica, we are all going to be in the building. So please make sure you say hello. Get some exclusive stuff from us. We got some stickers and other cool things. And take some cool pictures with us, too. Post us. Tag us. Mm-hmm. Um, make sure Shout you- out to uh, Portia. Portia. Castle Black host yes. and Richie, who will also be joining us. Absolutely. You might even see D Chico Leo, some old fan fam. You never know what could happen. <laughs> it will be a party. Usually is. Uh, make sure you are subscribed to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash for all nerds TV in order to see our lovely melanated faces. Be sure that you are also sharing and telling people about our show. Thank you to all the new subscribers and the new followers. Please share widely. This is what we do. We love this stuff. We are fans too. And we will see you soon.